Yeah, I think the next two years or three years look very constructive. Um, I think basically we have this window where the next six months, there's a lot of variables. So I think that basically next six months for Bitcoin, very unclear. I can make the case for retesting the, the lows or I can make the case for, you know, not going below 25,000. But that I think that the, the two year or the three year case is very, very strong. I have high conviction that um, basically we'll have, probably have another positive liquidity cycle in that environment. Renowned financial analyst and the founder of Lynn Alden Investment Management, Lynn Alden, has given her updated price predictions for the world's largest cryptocurrency. At the moment, we are witnessing the convergence of several macro and economic events that are negatively impacting prices in the cryptocurrency market and the overall investment scene in the United States. To begin with, the Federal Reserve is still sending mixed signals about potential future rate increases. On Friday, policymakers were stunned by the stronger-than-expected economic data. According to the latest inflation figures, consumer spending rose by 0.8% in April from the previous month's figures. Core PC inflation also increased from 4.6% to 4.7%. Not only is it on the rise again, but we are also still far off the Fed's 2% target. Though increased consumer spending might suggest the U.S. economy is not about to slip into a recession. It will undoubtedly strengthen the resolve of policymakers to announce further hikes when experts are strongly warning against such moves. In addition, the Treasury Department is currently emptying its coffers, the Treasury General Account, to keep servicing the nation's debts until the debt ceiling is raised or a default occurs. As such, the drawdown on the TGA is counteracting the effects of some of the Fed's quantitative tightening measures. As soon as the debt ceiling is raised, the Treasury Department will begin to actively refill the nation's coffers. If the Fed continues QT while Treasury is also sucking liquidity out of the markets, there might yet be more challenges for the economy in the other half of the year. Alden puts all this into consideration as she makes her short and long-term predictions for Bitcoin in a recent interview with Kiko News. According to Alden, the next few months will be rocky for the U.S. economy, depending on the Fed's and Treasury Department's next moves. The financial analyst expects it to further impact Bitcoin prices and possibly take it back to the lower 20s. However, Alden is also predicting a significant recovery for the leading crypto asset in two to three years. By then, the financial analyst expects Bitcoin to be back on track to hit six figures. Before we listen to Alden's full analysis and prediction, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our regular uploads. Also, be sure you drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. We love to hear from our viewers. Plus, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm so the video can reach more viewers. Thanks for your support and contributions to the channel's growth and enjoy the video. So I think on the surface, the narrative um, is pretty clear where basically it's, you know, the banking system's unstable and people say, well, I can self-custody money with Bitcoin. I don't have to worry about counterparty risk. I think that's part of it, but I think probably the bigger move is, is basically due to markets repricing their forward expectations for how um, aggressively the Fed can hike rates. So we saw, for example, that, you know, two-year treasuries, um, you know, um, stopped increasing. We saw that, you know, as you pointed out, the market's pricing in cuts by the end of the year. And a lot of that changed pretty rapidly, beginning with the banking crisis. And when you have a softening of forward expectations for how hawkish the Fed can be, then it gives a bid towards kind of anti-dollar trades, mm -hmm. scarce assets like gold and Bitcoin. And so I think the biggest move that we've seen probably in this, in this thing is not necessarily the narrative itself, but the kind of the structural market implications of rates. So I think as the Fed shifts from you know, tighten money as tight as possible, control inflation as much as possible, and instead kind of balance that between financial stability, that's what's given Bitcoin and other scarce assets a chance to get a, catch a bid. Um, I think the challenge is that when we go back to those liquidity questions I talked about earlier, like if the, if the Treasury tries to refill its Treasury a cash account really quickly while mm -hmm. the Fed's still doing QT, it's probably not gonna be good for Bitcoin for say a multi-week period, um, most likely. But when you do get some sort of pivot either the Fed ends its QT program or has to launch some sort of new liquidity program or the Treasury has to take some other action, I would be a buyer of that capitulation if we were to get one. Bitcoin formed a very big bottom in you know late 2018, early 2019, um, and then it grinded significantly higher, but then it kind of retested that bottom very briefly during the March 2020 sell-off. Um, and so it didn't hit like lower lows, but it did kind of briefly go back and plumb those depths. And the difference was that it didn't stay there for many months. It just kind of had this like big flick down and you had the liquidity response and a number of weeks later, it was already back up to well above that bottom. And I think you could see a similar thing where 
you get kind of a, a, a brief problem uh, that brings it down maybe lower than we expect. Um, but I don't think it would stay in that lower band um, anywhere near as long as it did in this in What this is prior. The, the price range of that lower band that you consider to be the bottom? I think it, I wouldn't be surprised to see it touch the lower 20s again if, if we get that specific scenario of a, a liquidity crisis from trying to refill the Treasury Gel account. Um, there are scenarios that I think could push it to the upper teens uh, yet again. Um, but I, again, I think that would be a, it'd probably spend less time there than it did in this prior bottom. Um, and instead, if they actually front run this, if, if the Fed ends quantitative tightening before you get the, the Treasury um, pull up, or if the Treasury does um, proactively kind of focus on issuing T-bills or increasing their Treasury account slower, then I think you're much less likely to, to, to retest those, those lows. Alden has expertly painted two possible scenarios for short-term investors and traders. If the Treasury and Federal Reserve managed to plunge the economy in a full-blown liquidity crisis that might have already started with a regional banking crisis and the rapidly declining commercial real estate prices, then Bitcoin prices could drop another 10 or 15 percent. On the flip side, the leading cryptocurrency can avoid such a fate if there's a surprise Fed pivot or a similar event that can bolster sentiments. Let's get back to Alden's interview as she further discusses her short and long-term price predictions for Bitcoin. The next two years or three years look very constructive. Um, I think basically we have this window where the next six months, there's a lot of variables that I think could throw us off. I think Stanley Druckenmiller said it best. He's like, he's like, I can make the case for deflation or I can make the case for 8% inflation. Mm -hmm. And I think he's touching on the same kind of uncertainties I'm touching on here, which is that there's, there's very key decision points that a handful of individuals can make, and that can determine pretty big swings in what happens. Um, so I think that basically next six months for Bitcoin, very unclear. I can make the case for retesting the, the lows, or I can make the case for you know not going below 25,000, but that I think that the, the two-year or the three-year case is very, very strong. I have high conviction that um, basically we'll have, probably have another positive liquidity cycle in that environment, and right now the valuation is very attractive, um, you know, compared to its its longer term, say, moving averages. I also think if you look at um, Bitcoin holding behavior, generally one thing you see in, in bull markets is that long-term holders begin selling some of their Bitcoin because they're up 5x, 10x, um, all this new money's rushing in, and they're reducing their positions. When you have bear markets, you generally instead see long-term holders are uh, not selling, that they're buying more, and you start to get a very large percentage of Bitcoin that haven't moved in a year or more. And right now we're very tight in that metric. Basically we have a lot of indicators kind of either pointing to the bottoms in or that the bottom um, at, at most is likely to be retested. Um, and so I'm very constructive with say a, a two to three year view. So I might push it out to late 2025 to give myself more room, but I do think um, there's a good chance of seeing six figures in this next call it three year cycle. Um, that's not for sure. I wouldn't go levered long and assume that to be the case. Um, I wouldn't build a business specifically that's going to happen. But if I would say my base case is I would I would expect to see six figures over, say, the next three years. I think we start with 100,000 or 120,000 and see if we get to that before making higher, higher uh, conviction, higher price targets from there. I think the biggest signal is that the Fed has to begin changing its hawkishness, despite the fact that they haven't met their inflation targets. Um, so, for example, if you go back to 2019 during the repo rate spike, spike um, in September of 2019, there was the repo market had all sorts of problems and the Fed had to abruptly end their quantitative tightening and shift to a form of quantitative easing. And they had trouble explaining why they had to do it. And it was in large part because you had T-bills crowding out um, bank reserves. And if you see a similar environment where they have to kind of pivot prematurely, um, and yet that happens in an above target inflation environment, um, I think that would be a sign that they've kind of lost control of inflation and that they have to, that would be a very strong signal to want to buy other assets, uh, either hard assets or generally anything that would benefit from a weaker dollar at that point. Like almost everyone else, Alden's short-term predictions for Bitcoin are pretty gloomy due to the current state of the U.S. economy. But in the long term, the renowned financial analyst believes Bitcoin could be trading above $100,000 possibly within the $120,000 range, a 361% increase from current prices. This would further cement Bitcoin's status as a safe haven asset and attract more investors, retail, and institutional. What are your thoughts on Lynn Alden's assessment of the current state of the U.S. economy and her predictions for Bitcoin? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. 
Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our regular video uploads. Thanks for watching.